Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Right now I'm sitting outside because it is a gorgeous day out. It is currently 65 degrees and it's like sunny and partly cloudy, but I'm really enjoying the weather, so is Luna. As you all know, we just love our little Miss Luna so, so, so much and want to help her live a happy and healthy life full of energy and adventures, which is why we have loved feeding her the farmer's dog for a few years now. The food is real and fresh and made from whole meat and veggies. Luna used to go hours of not eating her food. I'm not kidding. We would put her kibble in her bowl and she would just leave it alone. She would only eat it when she absolutely had to because she was so hungry. And then once we switched her over to the farmer's dog every single time she eats she licks her bowl clean and she is so excited for mealtime noticeable differences that we first saw in luna when we first switched her over to the farmer's dog a few years ago was obviously her being excited for mealtime and eating all of her food right away we also noticed that her coat became so shiny and so soft and she just had so much energy i can tell you wholeheartedly these changes with luna have stuck over the years so i think that just goes to show how high High quality the farmer's dog food really is. The farmer's dog food is delivered straight to your door and it was developed by vets to be complete and balanced. The meals are personalized for you. Like look how cool this is with Luna's name on it. The meals are also pre-portioned based on the information you provide such as your dog's age, weight, activity level, etc. Right now it has never been easier to invest in your dog's health with fresh food. You can use my link in the description box below to get 50% off of your first box of fresh dog food with the farmer's dog as well as free shipping. Thank you again so much to the farmer's dog for being awesome partners for sponsoring this portion of today's video and now let's get back into it. Honestly I can't remember when I did this but on Instagram and on YouTube I asked you all to ask me questions so I could film a little bit of a life update, a Q&A, talk to you guys about how I'm feeling now that I am back to flying after my knee surgery etc. All the questions that you guys have I'm going to do my best to answer in today's video. So today's just going to be a really chill, chatty Q&A. I have my water. It's a gorgeous day out, so I thought I would sit out here and film. And without further ado, let's get into it. As a consumer, what is the best day to fly during the week? I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I have no idea because every time I work, it doesn't matter if it is a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or a Friday. I feel like every single flight is always full unless if it's maybe like the very first flight of the morning or the last flight out to a destination. Sometimes those flights have open seats, but I think the best thing that you should do is just buy the tickets that work the best timing wise with your schedule. Favorite aircraft to work slash fly on? Anything Airbus. I love the Airbus. I don't really like Boeing. I very much prefer Airbus. However, when I work international flights, those are always on the Boeing, like the Boeing 777 or the Boeing 787. Um, I don't think we have any any of the like really big Airbuses in Philly. I think we used to, but not anymore. But if it's like a normal domestic trip, then any Airbus <laughs> for those like longer internationals, um, I only have experience on Boeing. Although I will say I do love the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. That plane is beautiful, it's smooth, and yeah, I just really like that plane. Relationship advice where your significant other is a flight attendant or pilot, and then an extension of that question is, how do you and Eric keep the romance alive? So I feel like whether you are a flight attendant or a pilot or work from an office job or I don't know, have any type of job, I feel like this advice could work no matter what your job title is. But I feel like especially if you do travel for work, I'm going to say like really good communication with your significant other is very important. So make sure that you're checking in throughout the day to see how each other are doing. Call each other at night. Make sure that you are still keeping that communication open because you don't want your partner to feel like you have just left on this business trip or you have left on a flight attendant pilot trip and you're just forgetting about them while you're gone. In terms of communication too, I feel like FaceTime is really important and like a really, really good tool to use, especially if you are like long distance or if you travel for work, just so that way you can still communicate and have that visual of each other as well. Another piece of relationship advice that I have is just to trust your partner because I feel like if you can't trust them, that is like the 
the foundation of a relationship and when that trust is broken that is oftentimes when I've noticed that either with like friends or people I know like when that trust is broken that's when the relationship starts to fall apart and it's just not good so I feel like it's really important to obviously trust your partner not break your partner's trust another piece of random relationship advice that I have is to just make sure that you are your own person too like of course it's obviously great that you have things in common like with your significant other and that you guys do things together but I think it's really important too to make sure that you have your own hobbies you have your own things that you like to and you are your own individual best version of yourself and when you are the best version of yourself you're able to bring that to your relationship and it can only make things better what do I love most about being a Philly based flight attendant and what do I miss about being Dallas based so I think what I love the most about being Philly based is the opportunity for more international flying I mean I've only been here not even a year yet and in terms of international flying I have already done Zurich Switzerland Lisbon Portugal Paris France and then I have an island layover coming up that's international so I'm super excited about that as well and I just feel like the trips are better out of Philly like I also really enjoy doing like the one one type of flying so for example one flight to Seattle I'll have like a 24-hour layover and then doing the red eye back or sometimes it'll be like a two one so say like Philly to Dallas Dallas to Phoenix layover and then the next day you'll go Phoenix um, back to Philly and I just feel like those trips were obviously available in Dallas too but you had to have higher seniority to get them because Dallas is just such a big base that there were more trips so I guess I missed that too like there was maybe more variety of trips out of Dallas like when you're bidding for flying and stuff like that but I just feel like the quality of the trips are just a little bit better in Philadelphia also because it's more of a junior base international flying is a lot easier to pick up and so like this summer I am really excited because I heard that the summer flying out of Philly is amazing so I'm really looking forward to that what do I miss about Dallas flying I would say kind of like I mentioned earlier the variety like I do just feel like there were maybe more options to choose from like when you're bidding and flying oh this is a good one okay top five things that annoy me as a flight attendant number one is definitely going to be delays because obviously I am human I don't like when flights are delayed either especially if it's the flight going home like if it's the last flight of a trip going home and it's delayed oh that is just the absolute worst also I feel like many of you know this but some of you might not know this is when we are delayed if we haven't boarded yet and we're just you know like sitting in the terminal I'm not being paid for that time and that kind of leads me into point two what annoys me the most about being a flight attendant is not being paid for boarding like I'm on the plane I am working in my opinion I absolutely should be being paid which is something that we are fighting for in our next contract right now our union is working really hard to try and get us an updated contract that will include boarding pay the third thing that I guess would annoy me as a flight attendant I need to think about this this doesn't happen very often but when it does happen obviously it doesn't feel very good and that is when someone takes their anger out on you for something that is completely out of your control and I feel like this happens not just as a flight attendant but I'm sure for all people working in any type of customer facing or over the phone like any type of customer service job for example like if it's storming so bad out and there's thunder and lightning and the ramps are closed and like our flight's gonna delay or cancel if a passenger like screams at me and freaks out at me over it dude that's not my fault I'm sorry like there's just nothing I can do about the weather you know so sometimes I get it because people are just frustrated they're angry they've got to get where they need to go but yelling at me isn't gonna change anything obviously it doesn't feel good when someone yells at you I think number four the thing that annoys me the most about being a flight attendant and I can't even really blame other people for this but it's just the assumption that the job is really easy and just the assumption that we're just there to look pretty and pass out pretzels and coke when it's like I went through six weeks of very intense training to learn how to save your life in the event of any type of medical or emergency with the plane. And I can't even blame other people for having 
that preconceived notion because the whole goal when you fly is to have a safe flight and for nothing to go wrong and when nothing goes wrong that clearly means that the entire crew knows what they're doing and that you know it's a completely safe flight and like obviously that's the goal a boring flight is a good flight so you can't be mad at people for not understanding that but i just feel like a lot of people assume that our job is really easy when it has, I guess you could say, like easier days, but as a whole, like it's not easy. As most of you know from watching my channel, we have 12 to 16 hour days, sometimes really early morning sign-ins at like four in the morning. Sometimes, you know, when we're delayed, we can go until four in the morning and it's just, it's a lot sometimes. Honestly, I'm sorry, I can't think of a fifth thing right now. So maybe I'll come back to that question. Next one is, what was my best result in gymnastics? Okay, it was my senior year and I think I scored either a 995. Yeah, I think it was a 995 on balance beam. And that was probably the best routine that I have ever done in my entire career. Bars and beam were my specialties, but beam has always been my favorite event. If you are interested in learning more about my career as a gymnast, I did film a video where I go into detail about it and I talk about gymnastics more specifically. So if you wanted to watch that and learn more about my career, I will definitely put a link for that video in the description box. Okay, speaking of athletics and fitness, the next question is, has my workout routine changed since my knee surgery? Speaking of my knee, how is it doing? So my workouts, They've changed a little bit, I would say. Obviously, when I first had my knee surgery, like I wasn't really doing hardly anything at all, but now that it's been over two months since I've had my knee surgery, I feel like I'm pretty much back to normal, although I can't really squat with weight, like I can't really do back squats yet, but everything else is okay. Although I can't like bend all the way down yet on my knee, and that's kind of frustrating. Um, my knee still has some numb spots in it, like where the incisions were from the surgery, but other than that, it is doing okay in terms of everything for upper body workouts that obviously was not affected at all I will say for lower body workouts I just can't really do anything that is single leg quite yet and anything that would cause me to bend my knee a lot I can't really do yet and I have had a little bit of um, oh my gosh what is quad I was like I can't remember the name of the muscle I've had a little bit of quad tendonitis in my right leg from obviously my surgery and so I think I just need to do some exercises to build Build that muscle up again but I mean other than all of that like I think it's doing fine was it hard physically and or mentally being back to flying after around six weeks off I'm not gonna lie to you guys yes it was so after my surgery I was obviously home for six weeks I didn't fly at all and I took a break from YouTube which honestly all of that was very needed just for my mental health I really 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 needed just a break from everything and I'm feeling a lot better now but it was pretty hard to go back I don't want to say I was dreading it because that's not the right word but I was definitely a little anxious just because I had started to develop my own little routines at home and I just got really used to being home with Eric and Luna every day so going back was a little hard and especially because when I was going back I was going back to a four-day trip and I personally don't enjoy working four-day trips I prefer two days three days max and so to be off that whole time and then to go back to a four day it was just a little bit mentally draining but hi Luna hi sweetie I can see you running around hi baby girl oh hello hi oh you're so cute so yeah it was a little just mentally daunting knowing that i was going back to a four-day trip but now that i feel like i've been back and it's been a few trips and i've obviously had like a few days off in between trips and whatnot i'm getting back into my normal flying schedule so i'm feeling better what is my favorite corner or part of the house honestly i'm gonna say where i'm sitting right here i 
love this corner of the house especially in the summertime it is so beautiful when all of the plants are blooming and there's just something so nice about being able to sit out here and just enjoy the outdoors favorite ice cream flavor either cookies and cream or this is gonna cause some controversy because I know some people love this and other people don't but I personally love mint chocolate chip ice cream and no I do not think that it tastes like toothpaste do I wear hair extensions no I do not I am very fortunate very blessed to have long hair see I can pull on this and it's not extensions proof not extensions. <laughs> a lot of people assume that I'm lying or that I wear hair extensions or eyelash extensions and I do not. Uh, my hair is natural and real. My hair definitely used to be a lot shorter like when I first started this channel but I've always loved long hair. I've always wanted to have long hair so after I cut it a few years ago before Eric and I went on a Royal Caribbean cruise I was like I'm not gonna dye it. I just want it to grow so I think I went like a year or two without dyeing it and I switched my shampoo and conditioner. I currently use the shampoo and conditioner from Costco. It's actually a Pureology dupe and it's awesome. I also really love it's a 10 products and I take daily vitamins and biotin and honestly just kind of doing all of those things. Oh, and avoiding heat, um, like not using hair straighteners or curlers on my hair a lot. I feel like doing all of those things over the years has just let my hair grow really long. And nope, I do not have any plans to cut it anytime soon. I love my hair and I love how long it is. Books that are currently on my TBR. Okay, honestly, I have way too many books that are on my current TBR, so I'll just talk about a few. I just read Where's Molly? Absolutely loved it. It's a spinoff from Haunting and Hunting Adeline. Very dark, but also incredible. I recently bought the book Bride by Allie Hazelwood, so I'm definitely going to read that one soon. A few random books and book series that are on my list that I want to read this year. The Bonds That Tie series. It's a super spicy fantasy series. The Mind F CK series. I've heard it is just absolutely incredible. It's like Dexter, but girl version. I really want to read Manacled. That is fan fiction that follows Draco Malfoy and Hermione, and it's like a world when Voldemort one, like as if Voldemort one instead of Harry. If I could take a cruise anywhere, where would I go? This is hard because there's a lot of different cruises that I want to take. I'd love to take an Alaskan cruise one day. I would love to take a Mediterranean cruise one day, but I have to say like dream cruise would be probably one through like Tahiti, Bora Bora, all of those beautiful little islands that are really difficult to get to. I think a cruise like that would just be amazing. That's probably like a bucket list or honeymoon type of cruise that would be so 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 cool to go on okay where do I see myself in the next five to ten years honestly I don't know <laughs> I know it sounds silly but like I really don't know I just hope that I'm happy and that's all that I can really care about right now I don't want to put a lot of pressure on myself to feel like I have to live my life a certain way or feel like I have to accomplish certain things within the next five to ten years or I'm not successful like I'm trying to live my life from a place right now where I measure my success on how happy I am I measure my success on how kind I feel how I treat other people I also just don't want to put pressure on myself to feel like I have to be at a specific place in my life in five to ten years because ten years ago if you asked me if I had any clue that I would be a flight attendant, that I would get to travel the world, that I would be a YouTuber, that I would have a very loving relationship and have a beautiful golden retriever, I would have laughed at you. Like there's no way that I would have thought that any of that was true and I'm just so grateful for the life that I get to live day to day that I don't want to spoil it for myself like I just want to take everything as it comes and as long as I'm happy in the next five to ten years then I'm good have I ever gotten extremely sick on a layover no thank goodness I have never gotten extremely sick on a layover although on my last trip when we were flying into Philly from LA yeah we were flying from LA it was so turbulent and the weather was awful the plane was shaken and you know the pilots tried to land it and they actually couldn't so we had to do an aborted landing go around a second time in my career that that had happened actually um, within a matter of weeks so that's 
that's kind of crazy that it happened so close together, but I felt so nauseous. I seriously was sitting in my jump seat and I thought I was gonna throw up. Um, I've never felt that nauseous on a plane ever in my entire life. So that's the closest I guess that I've ever been to like feeling really sick on a trip, but we were about to land in Philly and I knew that I wasn't actually sick. Like I knew that I was queasy and that I was feeling very nauseous and unwell because of the circumstances, like because I was in the back of the plane and because we were shaking so much. Do I know if the Philly airport has therapy dogs? Yes, the Philly airport actually does have therapy dogs. I've never met any of them yet, unfortunately. They're called the Wagging Tails Brigade, I think, and they're adorable. I see their posts on Instagram and whatnot, but I haven't met any of them quite yet. All right, next question, Dunkin' or Starbucks? I am a Starbucks girl at heart. I just, I don't know, every time I've tried Dunkin', I haven't found anything that I loved from them. So I'm gonna say Starbucks. But in my opinion, I like the coffee that I make at home even more. So I would say that it would go home coffee, Starbucks, Duncan. What do I think Luna's favorite book to read would be if she was a human and could read? Probably anything about Frisbee. Like probably something about like how to be the best at playing Frisbee, just because she's obsessed with it. And you know, that's her thing. How have I tolerated my first Philly winter? Do I still like living here? Honestly, the winter wasn't that bad here. It snowed a few days and there were a few days where the roads were pretty icy, but during those days, if I had to go somewhere, I just made Eric drive and I feel like it wasn't that bad because I was off of flying because of my knee surgery. So I really just kind of got to enjoy the winter at home. I didn't really have to work, so that was nice. Passenger um, princess. Yeah, passenger princess. I don't think I've mentioned it in this video, but Eric is sitting right next to me. If you heard that, that was him. <laughs> but yes, I'm a passenger princess, as always. But yeah, I feel like the Philly winter really wasn't that bad. I feel like I experienced worse winters living in Colorado. How old is Miss Luna? Miss Luna is currently six, and her birthday is in September, so she will be turning seven this year, and my heart just can't take it. I want her to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Six years young. Yes, she is six years young. Have I tried a Wegmans hoagie yet? Does Wegmans have hoagies? I'm sure they do. We haven't had that though. You definitely have not. No, definitely have not. I've had a hoagie from, oh, what's the name of the gas station that's famous Wawa. here? Wawa. People are gonna eat me alive for that. Yes, I've had a hoagie from Wawa. I always get the roast beef. I really like it, but have not tried a hoagie from Wegmans yet. Would I ever consider working for a foreign airline like Emirates? No. I was no. just talking to my mom about that. Really? Yeah, when we were in Paris, it was either an Emirates crew or what's the other like Middle um, Eastern airplane service? That's like, uh, like Etihad? Yeah, Etihad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they traveled with two suitcases. They had their the crew suitcase, attempts? and then really? they also had another, like, one that was even bigger. It was oh, massive. that's interesting. I remember you telling me that you worked with somebody who was a former Emirates mm -hmm. employee, and yeah. basically, like, they work until they get one complaint against them, and then they get fired. Yeah, so the rules when you work for, like, a lot of foreign airlines are a lot more strict than U.S.-based airlines, and, I mean, I've just heard things, like, with Emirates, like, you all live together in an apartment. I'm not really about that. Nothing wrong with that but I'm not really about that I like you know being able to live in my own house <laughs> but also I have zero plans in my life to move and live overseas like that so it just wouldn't work for me but I think it's an awesome opportunity for other people it's just wouldn't be for me. How often do people recognize me on flights while I am working or out on the streets during a layover? So I get recognized, I would say probably once a trip through any of the flights that I'm working or at the airport, I probably get recognized about once or twice a trip, either by a passenger or a crew member, either from my airline or another airline. And I love it. Like, I love when you guys come say hi to me. Didn't they like message you on Instagram asking if I was at some airport? Yes. So someone what messaged- was the other Yeah. So someone messaged me on Instagram and asked if Eric was at DIA and he was, you were, you were traveling. So that's really mm -hmm. funny. And then also when we went to DU for oh. alumni night, someone recognized no. you. No, they recognized you and they asked me to take a picture of you. <laughs> what do you mean? So you I thought they recognized you too. No. No, they recognized you and then they handed me their phone <laughs> and they were like, will you take a picture? <laughs> you remember that? I remember that. I thought that was really funny. You thought it was funny? It doesn't bother you at Dude all that- Dude totally ignored me. I mean, who am I? <laughs> oh, stop. Who everybody, am I? Everybody loves you. Do you know how many times I get asked like, we want to see more Eric. We want to see more Eric. Uh -huh. Give us more Eric. And do you know how many people are going to be like, you sat next to Eric in this Q&A and you didn't film a Q&A with him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
You were recognized hmm. in Galveston. We were on a roller coaster ride. I remember and that then now. Some you're lady right. yelled out, Julia. Yeah. Okay. Then, or we were on like the log flume. Right? Yeah, you're right. I do remember that now. That was the first time you yeah. were recognized. Yeah, that was cool. That was wild. Yeah, that was You're like, wild. whoa. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, I'm famous. JK, I'm not famous. I'm just a little guy. What advice would I give to a first year flight attendant? Sleep as much as you can and save as much money as you can because your first year you will likely be on reserve and your schedule is going to be all over the place. Honestly, those first year paychecks are really, really low. I've talked about it on my channel before, but the pay as for being a flight attendant is not very high. Like it's not known as being a high paying job. And yeah, just try and save as much money as you can because it can be a little bit tough. Have myself or my crew ever witnessed anything unusual out the window like aliens? Mm, I want to know this one too. I haven't. It'd be the pilots that know. Yeah, it would definitely be the pilots that would maybe see something unusual. But personally, no, I've never witnessed anything unusual out the window. I don't know. I feel like I'm weird though. I'm like a conspiracy theory person. So I think it would be really cool if I saw something out the window. There was a while where I asked you to ask pilots. <laughs> Every single trip, yeah. I asked you to ask pilots if they had like like UFO encounters and stuff like that. Yeah. And you said every single pilot said no. Yep, that is true. That made me sad. Yeah. And um, I didn't want to be that weird girl that just asked every single <laughs> pilot that I ever met, like, hey, hi, I'm Julia. Oh, by the way, have you ever seen aliens out the window? Like, I didn't want to be that person. Eric, I could ask you some of the random questions. Favorite ice cream flavor? I mean, you're roasted. Yours is like mint chocolate chip. I know. I said, mint cho I said mint chocolate chip. I'm honest. I don't lie. Even if I know I'm going to get roasted, I don't lie. I like plain ice creams. Like vanilla? Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. Yeah. I like whole. You also really like. Um, We're opposites there. You like you need like crunch and extra stuff <laughs> yeah. in your ice cream, and I just like normal flavors. You um, really like gelato too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gelato is really good. Ooh, this is a good one. As a gymnast, knowing what I know now, would I still recommend the sport to young kids? And then I guess for you as like a soccer player, would you still recommend soccer? Yes. Yes for soccer. Yes. I'm gonna say yes for gymnastics too, but just. Be careful like make sure you're going to a good gym make sure that you know the training is good and whatnot yeah oh my camera is dying so three two one and luna are you enjoying that stick all right you guys yeah my camera overheated and also look how funny this is um my tripod was not working so i brought the rice cooker out here to <laughs> my camera <laughs> So that's gonna be it for today's video. Thanks everybody so much for watching. Thank you again so much to The Farmer's Dog for partnering with me on today's video. We love you guys so much and you are awesome to collaborate with. Don't forget to click the link below to get 50% off your first box of fresh and healthy dog food. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Ask any more questions, maybe I'll do a part two to this video. I already said thank you for watching. I hope that you're all having a fabulous day and I'll see you next time.